Moving on over to the computer, you're going to want to open up your browser of choice. In today's video, I'm just going to be using Google Chrome. And then you're going to want to head on over to gmail.com. And we're going to be focusing on where it says create an account. It may look like a sign in screen, but we're going to click on create an account. Now, there is a chance that it may look like something like this, where it's going to say get more done with Google or with Gmail, you're going to want to left click on create an account in this case. So Anyway, it's going to take you to the same location, which is this page where it's going to create your account to continue to Gmail. You're going to want to have a first name, last name. You're going to want to come up with a username. This is what you're going to have to provide to somebody so they can send you emails. And then, of course, you're going to want to have a password that is at least eight or more characters with a mix of letters, numbers and symbols. For today's demo, let's just punch in some information here. Now, this is where things can get uh, not necessarily tricky, but uh, you may have some trial and error here because when you type in a username, it may or may not be available. So this one, because it's unique enough, it is certainly available. You can use letters, numbers, and periods to create this username. But if we were to change this over to, we'll just say jerry.smith2020 at Gmail, you can see that this username is taken and it wants us to choose a different one. So sometimes it'll pop up a suggestion underneath here, but most of the time those suggestions are something that you're probably not gonna remember because it usually consists of a bunch of uh, like just a few letters, so JS and then a bunch of numbers after that. So I would encourage you just to go through and find something that you're gonna remember, but also that is available. Once you've got your username taken care of, you're going to want to come on down to password and of course type in a password. Now, right now, because I'm typing through and this little I does not have a line through it, it's hiding the password, which is great if you're trying to create this at like a public library or something along those lines. You, of course, want to secure your password. Now, if it makes it easier and you're in the comfort of your own home or whatever, you can click the little I, which will put a line through it and that'll show you the password that you did type in. So how it kind of helps with uh, being able to see what you typed. Once you've got that information in there, just tap on next. Once you've clicked on next, it's going to take you to this page where it's gonna want you to put in a phone number. It, they are optional and another recovery email address, also optional, but it's a good idea to have one or both in case you forget your password. There's a couple different ways that Google can use to verify who you are and make sure they get you a password reset sent. So in this case, I am gonna do my phone number just because I know that's not going to change. And so you can type that in there. And again, if you have a secondary email address, maybe like at a Comcast or AOL, Yahoo, something along those lines that you have access to, type that in here because it's always good to have a couple different recoveries for that problem. So I'm gonna leave the optional empty because and this is a test account, so it's gonna be deleted anyway. Any case, again, you're gonna wanna type in or punch in your, uh, your birthday. There are legal requirements on certain age restrictions. We'll just do December 18th, 1990. And then of course you can choose your gender. If you'd rather not say, or you wanna put something custom in there, you can do that as well. And then you're gonna click on next. If you'd like to, you can add your phone number to your account to use across services like video calls, messages, blah, blah, blah. You can click, yes, I'm in, if you would like to have those. For this demo, I'm going to click a skip. And of course, we're gonna run through the privacy and terms. If you wanna read through those, you can. And then I'm gonna click on agree. Once it has finished creating your Gmail account, it's automatically gonna take you into what they call the inbox or like the home. And you'll get a Google Meet now in Gmail. They've integrated a few things. You can just left click right here where it says got it. Now from here, just kind of a quick overview of the user interface. Gmail by default breaks things into three different tabs. Primary is typically where you're gonna find most of your generic emails between your friends or family or whatever you're emailing, you're gonna find those under primary. Social are gonna be things like Facebook, as you can see right here, or Manscaped. If you wanna do some Manscaped stuff, you got that as well. But most of your social media stuff is going to fall under these. There are gonna be some ads. And then of course, the third one is promotions, marketing, all that good stuff is gonna fall under the promotions tab. Now you can go into the inbox settings here and make it to where all of these are consolidated under one, uh, under the primary tab. We're not going to be doing that in today's video. We're just gonna keep things pretty basic. So that being said, to create an email or to compose, you're just gonna left click where it says compose. It's gonna pop up in the bottom right hand corner. You can type in, of course, your two. That's who you're sending the email to. So something like none at none dot com, whoop, none, non at none dot com. Subject, of course, Everybody you by now should know what the subject is of a Gmail. So we'll just say new email account. And then of course you've got your body of the email. So you may get something that pops up as you start typing called smart compose. And what that is, is 
it's going to kind of give you suggestions on trying to finish out the sentences that you're trying to say. So, so there we go right there. You can see where it says Smart Compose. Got it. Turn it off if you like it. Great. If you don't want it, you can click Turn Off right here to turn that off. But you can see where it says Are You? question mark is kind of in a gray uh, format. And you can just hit Tab to finish that off. Or you can click on Feedback to give it some extra feedback. So if we just hit Tab it finishes that sentence for you. So moving on down here at the bottom, you've of course got your formatting options. You've got attaching files, insert links, insert emojis. These are where you're going to kind of spice up the email or add things, attach things to the email. And then of course, if you no longer want the email, you can click right here where it says discard draft or you can do control shift D and that will get rid of the email completely. But now what if you wanted to create an email and save it as a draft because maybe you're not quite done with it. All you need to do is click the little X right up here where it's gonna say save and close. This is going to save the email as a draft and then it's going to show up under the drafts on the left hand side. You can just click on that. You can see the email is right here. You just click it once again and it's gonna open it right back up in the bottom right hand corner so you can continue editing where you left off. If you want to be able to like reply or maybe you want to be able to forward an email, you're gonna to want to E open the email that you're trying to either forward or reply to. So in this case, we'll just open the Google community and you're going to want to scroll on down to the bottom where it says reply. Of course, if you click on reply, you're going to type in the message that you want to and you're going to click send. And of course, it's going to reply to that person. If you want to forward it, maybe you've got like a funny email or maybe you just need to forward an email to somebody. Click on forward, type in who it is. So none at none.com it's going to automatically put the email in there of course because it is a forward and then you can click on send once again now if you want to delete some emails going back to the inbox you can put a little checkbox and then you're going to want to click on delete and that's of course going to delete it which they will stay in the trash can for 30 days and then gmail will automatically delete it or if it is a spam email, you can uh, check the box and report it as spam. So that's just a quick overview on how to create a brand new Gmail account and use some of the basic tools under the user interface. And that's all there is to it. Very simple and easy to do. That is going to wrap it up for this week's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Of course, I hope you liked it and you got something out of it. If you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.